this is into the fire. It's a real privilege to welcome to Into the Fire, the very talented, highly regarded, funny number funny number two pick in last year's AFLW draft, Lucy McAvoy. Nice to meet you, Lucy. Nice to meet you too, LJ. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now, you're a bit of a character, aren't you? Exactly what we need in the AFL. Do you think your fantastic attitude helps you deal with the expectations put on the footballers nowadays? I think you're being a bit kind there, LJ. Um, I'm probably more of a pest than a bit of a character, I think, if you ask some of my teammates. But um, I do think it's a good quality of mine. Uh, I think it's it makes it easier to get along with people um, if, you, if you're a bit lighthearted and don't take things too seriously. So I think it's definitely something that a lot of players coming into the system these days are, are definitely picking up um, and just coming across as more relaxed because it, it isn't as serious these days. Um, they like good character. So, um, yeah, it's certainly starting to be shown, I think, more in both men's and women's. Yeah, it's a good trait. Now, I absolutely love reading up about you. You're such a fascinating person in such a good way. It's hard to know where to start. Let's start with you growing up. But he wasn't, a, wasn't as big for girls as it, is, as it is now. You played basketball. How good were you really? Come on, pump it up. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, well, basketball was like the main one because there was a pathway, you know, they had WNBA and I was like, yep, I'm going to play WNBA. But in actual fact, I was was not that good at basketball. I'd like to think I was all right, but um, spent a lot of time on the bench, but still enjoyed it nonetheless. But I think it certainly set me up well um, for footy. I think it hardened me up a little bit, um, which was good. And I had great coaches, um, taught me how to work in a team as well. So I certainly did enjoy it, but uh, I don't think I was the best. <laughs> it's a great sport. Now, you didn't nominate for the Geelong area in the draft. Instead, choosing to nominate Metro Victoria, was it hard to turn your back on the Cats? I bet they were disappointed. Yeah, it was a little bit because I've got lots of great friends uh, at the Cats in the women's side. Uh, I played junior, junior footy with a few of them and I also played a little bit of VFL. So for me, not to pick them was, was pretty big. It's probably been the biggest decision I've had to make in my life so far. Um, I just sort of had to weigh up pros and cons of, of what I wanted to do moving forward. Um, I mean, I love Geelong, don't get me wrong, but it, it can be a bit of a bubble. You, you've got no secrets in Geelong. Everyone knows everything. So I thought I'd change it up, get out of Geelong, see the world, um, go to the big smoke, which I always loved doing. When I played basketball, we used to travel to Melbourne. So, um, yeah, I used to love just driving into Melbourne. You'd, you'd think you were the bee's knees, honestly. So, um, yeah, I've loved it, though, being in Melbourne. But um, I do miss Geelong a little bit. Yeah, it, so it sounded like a very hard decision. Now, you want to be a paramedic. They are absolute heroes in my eyes. You always say you like to go outside your comfort zone. Well, that is definitely a job for it. Yeah, isn't it? It's, um, I'm quite enjoying it at the moment, the study, which has been really good. Um, we got to do a little bit of hands-on stuff a couple months back, um, which involves shoving some tubes down like dummies' throats, which was pretty fun. Um, and next month, we'll get to um, stick some needles in fake people, which will be good. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you have a really close bond with your parents, and I know your dad was really sad you were moving out. Did you tell him that living at home until you're 40 is worse? How's he coping now? <laughs> I did. I remember the day... Well, I remember telling him that I was going to choose uh, Melbourne and move to Melbourne, and he was quite supportive of that and then the day that I'd made my decision and put my application in for the for the draft he I walked in the door and he's like nah I don't want it don't want you to leave and I was like well too late I've already I've already picked Melbourne um but he's he's now really good about it he loves it um and he and he knows how much I love living in Melbourne so I think if I'm happy he's happy and he's always been really supportive which is good yeah definitely now your uncle is a is big boy McAvoy he certainly can't play. Has he given you any advice? Yeah, we've been in contact um, quite a few times, which has been good. Obviously, he's got um, so much more experience. He's been in the league for over 10 years now. So, um, 
he's certainly been very helpful, especially leading into the draft. You know, there can be lots of lots of nerves, um, and he was able to sort of set me down a little bit and explain the process, which which made it really clear um, and comforting, just to see how it all works and and what to expect coming into the AFL system. Yeah, sounds like a great guy. Now, you had an interview with him. Don't worry, this interview will be a lot more fun. Oh, good, because I remember that interview and I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone says you're a loyal friend and someone that will do anything to help them out. Is it true you gave up a ticket to the grand final because you already said you were going to another friend's house? That's madness. Yeah, I was pretty lucky that I'd already gone to the 2017 Richmond Grand Final and the 2019 one, I, I kind of had an inkling that they were going to win it. Um, and knowing that I'd already been to one, I felt like it was kind of selfish to take up another ticket to go to the 2019 one. And I'd already made plans and I always feel bad turning down like someone's plans to go somewhere else. So... I thought, no, I'll just, I'll, I'll go to my friend's house and watch it there. And it was just as good. I mean, obviously it's not as loud and you don't have that atmosphere, but it was still fun. Yes. Now, you're a mad Richmond supporter. Have you managed to meet the great man Dusty Martin in your travels? I wish. I think that's, that's still a dream. Um, hopefully one day I'll come across him. I'm sure I'll be starstruck if I did. Um, I love watching him play still. I still cheer the boys on um, when they're playing. Hopefully they can take it all the way this year and, and Dusty can win another Norm Smith. That'll be great. Yeah, he's a great player. Now, you played for Vic Country at the Under-18 Championships and surprise, surprise, you won All-Australian and captain of the team and team MVP and lost only to the winners, Vic Metro. That must have been an awesome week. Yeah, it was a great week. I've always loved going up to Queensland to play a week of footy. I mean, I love it. So just living the life. And I'm kind of jealous of the boys at the moment that, that they're in Queensland playing footy. Um, but that was probably one of the best best weeks of my life. You spend it with great people. You get to play footy again. Um, and I suppose I was just lucky to get those accolades, I think, at the end of the week. Um, we played quite well at Nationals. So, yeah, I couldn't have been happier with those weeks that we spent there. Yeah. Now, you did play head-to-head -head with one of my all-time faves, Georgia Patrikos. And I think she'd like me to say she's one of the tournament's best player. What was it like playing on her? Yeah, she's a gun. I've known her for, I think, maybe four or five years now. And she's, she's fantastic. I certainly don't like coming up against her because she's, she's way quicker than me. Her side steps are killer. It puts me on my bum on the ground every time. So um, credit to her in that way. But it was funny, in our first Nationals together, we actually shared a room together. Um, it was great fun. She's a great, great friend. Um, but, it, yeah, I used to talk about then, like, can you teach me some of your moves? Because I seriously am lost for words when I watch her play. Yeah, she's an awesome player. Can I just say... I've gone on record to say that both of you girls will win an AFL Best and Fairest. Ooh, that's a, that's a close one. That's a big call, LJ. I'll have to work hard to try and make it happen for you. All right. So you started with the Blues last year. And let's be honest, for a first-year player, you were outstanding. What did you notice the most about the jump to the, into the AFL system? Um, thank you for the compliment as well. Um, but I think the biggest jump would be probably the intensity and physicality of it. I remember our first practice game, um, which I think maybe was like three weeks before the season started. Uh, first touch of the ball, first practice game against another AFW team, picked it up and just got smashed straight away. So it's a lot quicker. The intensity is so much higher. Um, and I think it was good having those practice games just to get used to that because I suppose you really don't, uh, notice it until you do play an actual game because obviously you don't want to hurt your teammates uh, during training and scrimmage at training so that was probably the biggest step up for me. Yeah okay let's ask you some questions about being at Carlton. Taylor Harris is a star. Is it true you only go out with her to nightclubs in case a fight breaks out? <laughs> Unfortunately I only got to go out with her one night which was at the end of our season um, 
but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's why I hang out with her. She'll, she's a good bodyguard in that aspect, um, but she's also great to hang out with in general. She's funny, nice, everything you want, want in a friend. Yeah, she is. Dulcie v- Versio is quite the character. Is it true she told you that it was not okay to be funnier than her when you got to the club? Yeah, she likes that little tag she has at the club being the witty one, the funny one. Um, And I don't think anyone will ever take that off her because every time you talk to her, she's got something else that'll just pop out and she's so witty. You just, every training, every time we say you're on the floor laughing because I don't, I don't know how she thinks of half the stuff she comes up with, but it seriously cracks me up, puts me in a good mood, um, and I love hanging out with her for that reason. Yeah, she sounds like a funny girl. Just drop a name to these questions. Who is the messiest player? Jess Hosking. Oh, yeah. Who would stop, stop mid-run to redo their hair? Or probably Grace Egan, Greg. She loves making herself look good in case there's a camera around. Yeah. Who is most likely to hide your boots? Oh, someone actually did do that. Who was it? I still don't know who did it to this day, but I walked around aimlessly for like an hour trying to find my boots. I don't know who it was, but somebody did do that. I'm going to say it was probably Katie Loins. Oh, yeah. Someone goes to the toilet at half time to look in the mirror. Who is it? <laughs> um, probably, or probably Grace Egan again, just because yeah. she knows the game is on TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's the cheekiest on the field? On the field, um, I'm gonna have to go with Grace Egan again. She loves getting in a bit of biff and talking to people, just yapping away in their ear. <laughs> yeah, she definitely does. Who's most likely to leave their footy gear at home? Oh, that's a good one. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Maddie Press Parkers did that, to be honest. Sometimes she's she's quite on top of things, but it would not surprise me if she did that. Okay. Someone you would hate to room with? Ooh. Um, probably Jess Hosking, just because of the fact that she's messy and I'm such a neat freak. Yeah. Okay, some last questions just for you. What would you eat if you choose anything for tea? Uh, steak and broccoli. It's always been a go-to. Love it. Can't go past it. Yeah, steak's the best. You're in an elevator with one person. You're too nervous to talk to. Talk to. Who is it? Ooh, um, probably Dustin Martin. Just because oh, he's done. And it's like, if you were, if I was next to one, I know I'd be, I'd probably pass out, to be honest, LJ. I would, I wouldn't even get the moment to spend with him because I'd be passed out, so. I'd be pretty nervous too. What would you do better on, Big Brother or Survivor? Oh, probably Big Brother, just because I hate, like, bugs and stuff, like spiders, any bugs, anything really that's got more than two legs I'm kind of scared of so <laughs> yeah I hate probably too. big brother yeah I hate oh spiders. they're pe- terrifying yeah if you were flown free to any sporting event in the world what would you choose Ooh, uh probably the Super Bowl NFL Super Bowl I think it's a great sport to watch and I've gotten quite into it lately so that's probably my go-to oh yeah that would be cool what would you rather, skydiving or swimming with sharks? Or skydiving, just again, because it's an animal and I'm scared of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your go-to karaoke song? Uh, I think I would probably get shot down in flames by a few people if I didn't say home among the gum trees. Um, oh, yeah. I've been known to belt out that just in ice baths in the change room. So, yeah, it's going to be going to have to be that. Yeah, it's a classic one. Well, playing in a team with such great forwards, I know it's not always easy to get a goal, but with the talent you have, I think it's time you said to them, look out, it's my time. Grab the ball out of the middle, take a bounce, ignore Taylor on the lead, give Darcy the big don't argue, and then slot it through. Then this is the important part. 
stand in the middle of the 50, turn to the camera and give it the big Into the Fire celebration. The, ce the <laughs> one celebration that is yet to make its way onto the AFLW stage. This is the year and I'm giving you that responsibility. All right, you've got it, LJ. I'll do that just for you. Do you want to give it a go? Yeah, wait, so can you show me what it is? All right, do you want me to practice it now? Yeah, sure. Tell me if I do it right. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. All right, I'll, I'll do it for you, I promise. Keep an eye yeah. out when I kick a goal next season. Yeah, remember that. Well, Lucy, I can see why everyone loves you so much. You're a tremendous player, a great leader, and most of all, a terrific person. I have loved talking to you and can't wait to see you tear it up this year. All the best, mate. Thanks, LJ. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.